This video is sponsored by the Praesidus Watch Company. The First World War saw the birth of the fighter pilot, men who became legends and household names. The emergence of the fighter or pursuit aircraft revolutionized aerial combat. World War II saw the exponential growth of the fighter pilot legend. Regardless of their national origin, they became celebrities, and the United States was no exception. Brigadier General Clarence Bud Anderson became a triple ace, meaning he had at least 15 victories, and became one of these amazing air heroes like Chuck Yeager and many others who motivated our nation by their heroism and specialized skills in the cockpit. Who is Bud Anderson? What made him an effective fighter pilot? What gave him the interest of flying? Hello, I'm Colin Heaton, a veteran of the United States Army and Marine Corps, former history professor, book author, and welcome to this episode of Forgotten History. In the military, we must have reliable and accurate timepieces. So here I am with the Prezidus A2 Bud Anderson version of their watch, which is a throwback to the styles used in World War II and Korea. It's very well made, easily uh, usable, very user friendly, with a solid built case. And I highly suggest you get one, not just for the value and for the durability and accuracy of the watch, but uh, it's also a nice throwback to history. Enjoy. Bud Anderson was born on January 13, 1922 in Oakland, California and raised on a farm near Newcastle, California. As a boy, he was thrilled to watch the aircraft flying nearby and it grabbed his interest. Growing up, shooting quail would give him experience in leading flying targets that would pay off later. In high school, he was a gifted athlete and played both football and basketball. He was introduced to aviation at Oakland Municipal Airport. Bud learned to fly in the civilian pilot training program and received his private pilot's license in 1941. Bud Anderson was working at the Sacramento Air Depot when the Japanese attacked Pearl Harbor on December 7, 1941, and he knew that this would be his war. On his 20th birthday, he qualified to join the Army Air Corps, and he volunteered for aviation cadet training. He completed primary flight training at Lindbergh Field, San Diego, and finished his advanced training at Luke Field, Arizona. Bud received his wings and was commissioned a second lieutenant on September 29, 1942. He began flying the Bell P-39 Aerocobra with the 329th Fighter Squadron of the 328th Fighter Group at Hamilton Field and then at the Oakland Municipal Airport from September 1942 to March 1943. While in training, Bud was flying his P-39 Bell Aerocobra, the first aircraft he named Old Crow, with a new and inexperienced wingman when they were bounced by a group of U.S. Navy F-4F Wildcats wanting to mock a dogfight. Bud declined, but his novice wingman, apparently spooked by the event, made an error and snap-rolled into the ground. The death of his wingman left a lasting impression on the young Bud Anderson, and during the 1940s, about 15,000 airmen would die in training. Such was the danger of the job. Only the best would rise to the top. Bud was later assigned to the 363rd Fighter Squadron of the 357th Fighter Group at Tonopah, Nevada in March 1943, later moving to various bases in California and Wyoming. In November 1943, the unit deployed to England. The U.S. 8th Air Force had started bombing missions in August 1942 and slowly expanding their missions deeper into German-occupied Europe. The heavy and medium bombers had been taking heavy losses, primarily due to the lack of enough long-range fighter escort aircraft. When Bud Anderson was originally assigned to the 328th, he had later transferred to the 363rd Fighter Squadron of the 357th Fighter Group flying the P-39 Air Cobra. In November 1943, the 363rd was assigned to Lyston, England, and became the first unit in the 8th Air Force to receive the P-51 Mustang. The 357th Fighter Group in total flew the P-51 Mustang and painted their Mustangs with red and yellow checkered noses and red rudders. Bud's was P-51B-15 
November Alpha, Alpha Alpha Foxtrot serial number 43-24823, then a P51D 10 NAAF serial number 44-14450B6, also named Old Crow for that brand of bourbon. They were all known as the Yoxford Boys from the region of their base at Lyston Field in England. In January 1944, Lieutenant General James H. Doolittle became the 8th Air Force commander and he unleashed a new strategy. He would have fighters sent ahead of the bombers to draw the Germans up to be shot down before the bombers arrived. Then, the remaining escort fighters would protect the bombers from the, those Germans that remained in the air. Luftwaffe General of the Fighters Adolf Galland called this new strategy, quote, the one thing that was really the beginning of the end for my fighters, especially during Big Week. Anderson flew his first mission on February 5, 1944, as part of the 354th Fighter Group, as the 357th pilots were rotated to fly with an experienced group to gain combat experience. On February 20th, Bud scored his first victory over a Messerschmitt 109, and the pilot survived. On February 21st, Bud remained behind while fellow pilot Al Boyle took his P-51B Old Crow on the mission, and he scored a kill, but Old Crow was lost and Boyle became a prisoner of war. The second P-51 Old Crow was lost on March 22, 1944, with Lieutenant Carter Jones becoming a prisoner of war. Bud, with his third assignment of a P-51B, and a month later, on March 8, 1944, he shot down a Messerschmitt 109 that was in a flight of three planes attacking a straggling B-17 flying fortress over Berlin. Bud was in a turning dogfight, neither pilot gaining an advantage, until Bud decided to take a wide deflection shot leading the 109 and scored hits with two bursts. This was his first aerial victory and he only used 50 rounds of ammunition. All three 109s were shot down. John England joined with Bud after this victory, but Bud was confused if he or John had shot down the 109. Bud found out at the bar from John that Bud had in fact made the kill. Then Bud was joined by other pilots such as Bill Overstreet, Edward Simpson, and Lieutenant Kayser from his squadron, and they all took part in shooting down an HE-111. Since all four pilots had shots on the bomber, they each received a quarter kill. Anderson continued to score victories until he shot down a BF-109 over Frankfurt, his fifth aerial victory on May 12, 1944, becoming an ace. On May 27, 1944, Anderson was escorting bombers to Ludwigshaven and Mannheim, Germany. His group spotted a large number of enemy fighters about to attack the bomber formation. They dropped their external wing tanks and turned sharply to engage the enemy fighters. Immediately, four 109s were spotted diving on their formation from five o'clock high. Banking sharply, they broke up the attack and the four 109s pulled up and began circling with the Mustangs. One German broke away and was pursued by another pair of Mustangs, while Anderson and his wingman pursued the remaining three. Bud quickly downed two of the 109s and forced the other to run for home. His supporting element disposed of the other 109 and rejoined them to continue escorting the bombers to their target. June 1944 was a noteworthy month for Anderson and his fellow 357th Fighter Group flyers. Beginning with D-Day, on June 6, 1944, numerous ground support fighter bomber missions were flown to assist the invading Allied troops. This included the first use in the European theater of operations of gasoline-filled belly tanks as firebombs against railroad targets. On June 29th, Anderson's group flew bomber escort on a historic 8th Air Force mission, which dispatched 1,150 B-17s and B-24s on a raid to Berlin. Only 17 bombers were lost due to flak and none to enemy fighters. That day, Anderson managed to shoot down three FW-190s, becoming the high scorer and after five months of combat, Bud led 20 other aces in the 357th with that total of 11 and a quarter victories. He was then promoted to major at only age 22. Bud completed his first tour of combat in July 1944 with 12 and a quarter victories to his credit. 
After a brief rest in the United States, he returned to Europe for a second tour in October 1944 and went on to become the leading ace of the 363rd Fighter Squadron with 16 and a quarter aerial victories in 116 combat missions. He scored his final aerial victories on December 5, 1944, when he shot down two FW 190s over Berlin. Bud was the leading ace of the 363rd Fighter Squadron with 16 and a quarter victories. He flew 116 combat missions in total without ever being hit by fire from an enemy aircraft or ever having to turn back for any mechanical reason. Bud, like all fighter pilots, gave that credit to their crew chiefs, whom Bud most humbly always thought were the most invisible and unheralded people in the air war. But they were, according to Bud, the most important. Once he said, quote, If you do not have a great chief mechanic and a great ground crew, you are useless as a fighter. Any success you have is owed to those men, and never forget it. Bud Anderson returned home at Perrin Field, Texas in January 1945 until October 1945, assigned as a recruiter in Ohio. During this period, he married Eleanor Cosby on February 23, 1945. He later served as a test pilot at Wright Field from May 1948 to February 1953. During this time, he took part in the FICON, or Fighter Conveyor Project, a concept to increase the effective combat radius of jet fighters by attaching them to a propeller-driven bomber, mainly the B-29 Superfortress and B-36 Peacemaker, one fighter hooked up to each wingtip. The theory was that such a configuration would increase the operational range of the fighters, allowing the bomber to carry its own fighter escort deep into enemy territory. Bud Anderson attended Air Command and Staff College at Maxwell Air Force Base, Alabama from September 1954 to August 1955 until he was assigned as Director of Operations for the 58th Fighter Bomber Wing at Osan Air Base, South Korea from August 1955 to February 1956 and then as Commander of the 69th Fighter Bomber Squadron of the, from February to August 1956. Anderson continued to serve as a test pilot and was assigned as Assistant Chief and then Chief of the Flight Test Operations Division at Edwards Air Force Base from November 1957 to August 1962. He then attended the Army War College at Carlisle Barracks, Pennsylvania from August 1962 to July 1963. In June to December 1970, he commanded the 355th Tactical Fighter Wing flying the F-105 Thunder Chief during its final months of service in the Vietnam War. Stationed at Tackley Royal Thai Air Force Base, Bud flew strikes against enemy supply lines and later was in charge of closing the base when 355th TFW was deactivated. Bud Anderson retired as a full colonel in March 1972. He was decorated 25 times for his service to the United States. During his career, Bud was awarded the Legion of Merit, the Distinguished Flying Cross with four oak leaf clusters, the Bronze Star, the Air Medal with 15 oak leaf clusters, and the French Croix de Guerre with palm. After a distinguished military career of over 30 years, he retired in 1972, and then Bud then joined the McDonnell Aircraft Company as their facilities manager at Edwards Air Force Base until 1998. After retirement, he wrote his book, To Fly and Fight, which tells the story of his life in aviation. Signed copies are available from his website to www.flyandfight.com. Today, there are two privately owned P-51 Mustangs that carry the 357th Fighter Group markings and are painted as Old Crow in his honor and in honor of the fighter in which he became a legend. During his career, he flew over 100 types of aircraft and logged over 7,000 hours. Bud was selected as an Eagle by Air Command and Staff College's Gathering of Eagles in 1987 and subsequently honored in 1989, 1992, 1997, and 2014, respectively. In July 2008, Bud was inducted into the National Aviation Hall of Fame, and in 2013, Bud was inducted into the San Diego Air and Space Museum's International Air and Space Hall of Fame as well. 
Sadly, his beloved wife Eleanor died on January 30th, 2015. Also that year, Bud was awarded the Congressional Gold Medal with all of the American fighter races. In 2017, Bud was inducted into the EAA Warbirds of America Hall of Fame and awarded the Air Force Association's Lifetime Achievement Award. Clarence E. Bud Anderson is the last living American triple flying ace of World War II and one of the last World War II veterans from all nations still living. He was and still is a most remarkable, humble, and gracious human being and a patriotic American. In December 2022, Bud received an honorary promotion to Brigadier General. Chief of the Air Force General Charles Brown presided over the ceremony and penned the new rank on Bud. Bud Anderson turned 100 years old in January 2022 and his hometown honored him with a grand celebration and parade. Bud Anderson is, as of this video, 101 years old, a living reminder of the greatest generation who not only fought for their country, they fought to save the world and won. Thank you for watching Forgotten History. Please click like, subscribe, and share. Send us comments and show ideas, and we will get back to you as soon as possible. Until next time.